be stranded on an alien planet with no other humans, surrounded by ocean, and alien creatures seeming like a hopeless scenario. But this is the challenge Subnautica presents to its players. To survive on your own with no knowledge of the world's dangers, and to find a way to escape all by yourself. To many, Subnautica is a scary game, and that is because of its dedication to its atmosphere. Through design aspects such as the massive scope of the hand-built world, something very unusual for the survival genre, and the mysteries left scattered throughout the alien planet of 4546b, the massive and Larry Leviathans and other threats scattered through the world, the atmosphere of Subnautica both bears an overwhelming sense of loneliness and is prepared to frighten the player at every turn. All for the sake of its atmosphere and immersive experience. Fear and loneliness are used in tandem to make the player f truly feel like they are trapped, alone, on an alien world, and it is up to them to survive and escape by themselves. When someone talks about the atmosphere in a game, they are referring to how the world of the game feels. Subnautica's ocean planet of 4546b has one feeling permeating its atmosphere above all else. Loneliness. Why would someone want to game to feel lonely? to make the player focus on the goal, to escape, and to immerse them into the world and how they are alone with it so they can become one with it. The world of Subnautica, while limited in size, is designed to encourage you to explore its various biomes, and the further the player explores, the more mysteries of the world and deeper waters they discover make the player realize they are alone. Nobody can save them except for themselves. There is not a single interaction with a human in this game beyond long ago recorded radio messages and abandoned PDAs. On planet 4546b, nobody can save you except yourself. The reason for this feeling of loneliness is to keep the player pushing forward in their quest for escape. It is only complemented by the beauty of the world in its many biomes, be it the glow of the Grand Reef, the pink mushrooms of the Jelly Shroom Caves, or the ethereal presence of the Lost River and its fields of bones and fossils. The further the player explores, the more abandoned bases and alien installations they find, showing they were not the first to arrive on this planet, and if they are not careful, they will find and meet the fate of the same as those who came before them. There is not a single human interaction in the game, only long dead radio calls and abandoned PDAs from people who all met the same fate as you. Every day on the world brings new wonders for them to witness, new burning wreckages to discover and resources to find inside them. But every night, in the inky darkness of the ocean, the player is reminded by their crashed ship that they are alone. This atmosphere of loneliness exists to push players, to immerse them into the world and become invested in their escape. The world is not empty, not even a little, but the inspiration to explore and learn to progress towards can wane in the face of the primary deterrent of the world. The face many face when diving into those dark, black depths and seeing the giant creatures that could come up just around that bend of the cave. is a Reaper Leviathan, a 55 meter behemoth that will very commonly be the cause of a player's first death in the game. Its roaring calls inspire fear in players and can act as the ultimate wall for a player to push through in their explorations. But why go through the effort of scaring a player so intensely? Why put such a gigantic and frightening creature in the game? Two reasons, to serve the atmosphere and the world of the game, and to use as deterrence. Reapers are placed in many locations around the map, but they aren't placed randomly. They only appear in places that make sense for such a massive predator to hunt. The same goes for other large and hostile creatures. Warning, entering ecological death zone. Adding report to databank. But fear is also the greatest deterrent. This is the most brilliant usage of these massive leviathans. Unlike many sandbox survival games, Subnautica's world is finite. It has an end. This end is a space surrounding the playable area called the Dead Zone, an area where the only life is hostile leviathans that lock onto the player and attack. The developers created this to be both a deterrent of fear and a very real threat to the players, to push them back to where they should be playing. 
Deve developers use fear to both test the player's determination to explore and give their ecosystem incredible and iconic apex predators to make their world even more immersive. While the world of 4546B is beautiful, loneliness pervades the player's time on it. The player spends all this time investigating, learning about the fates of the people who lived there. They are surrounded on all sides with unfamiliar environments and creatures that could tear them apart without batting an eye. The absolutely intense feeling of being alone with no support and the fear of what lurks below in the darkness below you permeates the game's atmosphere to a level that is absolutely immersive. The game making you feel these intense feelings is a part of the experience, the immersion, that these feelings produce provides a vastly improved experience and an atmosphere that few games can match. 